So I think first we've got to survey again and it's going to talk about the past we've got to go back to this. And this is joint work with Gordon Hoy and Frank Stefan. So uh, first take it with a grain of salt because it's still exponential time, but just faster than previous one. That's all. Okay. So let's consider the problem. So uh, we are considering the th standard three set problem. So you have a bunch of clauses and you want to find a satisfying assignment. So we will consider the variation which is known as either x sat or 1 in 3 sat and so on and so forth. So you want that in each of the clauses exactly one literal gets satisfied. So you want to find those assignments. And there are various other versions which are interesting such as finding all such assignments which make exactly one in each clause or finding how many of them are there. The particular problem which we are going to study is that we want to find how diverse these uh, assignments can be. So in particular what has been studied earlier is what is the maximum Hamming distance between two assignments which satisfy the requirements. Uh, so that's what we are going to be interested in. Uh, so by brute force you can consider all possible pairs of assignments which satisfy the clauses and then see what is their distance and so on that takes about 4 to the n time. And for maximum Hamming distance for just x sat, not 3 x sat, and Dahlov did it in time about 1.83 to the n. And for uh, x 3 sat, the earlier one was 1.676 to the n. And uh, for max Hamming distance for x sat, it has been improved in this year to 1.49 for x3 sat in this talk we will do 1.3298 to the end. So just what is the history of how the improvement is done. So let's consider an example first. Uh, so let's consider that example x1 or x2 or x3 and so on. This was particularly chosen so that it becomes easier to say what's going on. So you have four assignments which make this x3 sat problem satisfiable and all of them have distance 4. Uh, so uh, if you take the same uh, in both sides of course the distance is 0 there. Okay? So what we want to uh, come up with is a formula something like this 12 u to the 4, u to the 4 will say that you have distance 4 and there are 12 pairs. Note that we are considering the first item, second item, if you swap, that is count 2. That just makes counting easier. If you don't want that, just divide by 2 everywhere. But that makes the rest of the proof easier to just say we consider them as distinct. Uh, plus fold u to the 0. And the reason, particular reason we want to put this in a, in a formula like this is that it makes it easier to multiply, add, and so on and so forth for various things which we want to do. Just makes the computations easier. Okay, so uh, let's consider the brute force idea. So you have a search tree. So you start from the root. For each variable, you consider all possibilities of the two assignments, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, and then see what happens. So you go down. So you have at each level four branches. You have n variables. It will give you 4 to the n. And at the leaf, if the pair both of them are solutions, then we consider what is the Hamming distance between them. And if it is a distance is k, you put u to the k as the value at the leaf. If one of them is not a solution, at least one of them is not a solution, you put it 0. And then you want to sum up all the values at the leaf. That will give you the formula we are after. Okay? So, uh, well, even though we have 4 to the n, you might have some polynomial time computations at each level or each place to do whatever you are doing. That polynomial will be something in, of polynomial in the size of the formula and the number of variables. Uh, throughout this talk, I will ignore that polynomial because that's small compared to the exponential part, so we will just ignore them. Okay, so what do we do? So we will consider still the search tree like that. But at each point, rather than branching 
as in brute force we want to do some simplifications. For example, if we already know that some assignment to the variable is not going to work, we want to get rid of it or we want to say in some sense that some variables are linked to each other. If x is 1, y must be 1. If x is 0, y must be 0 or whichever way. We want to simplify, get rid of that part. Okay? Uh, in all these kind of tricks, you will have some polynomial time of computation to the simplification. And the whole complexity depends on how many leaves you have. So what we are going to do mainly is do the simplification, count the number of leaves. And uh, that number of leaves will be exponential. And what is that exponential? That gives us the complexity of the algorithm. So that's the basic idea. OK, so you have an input set, uh, three set formula, which we want to do. X is the set of variables for phi in the, some notation. So we will use uh, qxij is equal to u if i is not equal to j. Intuitively, at the leaf, assuming we were doing a brute force approach, qxij says what x contributes to in that formula. And if uh, i is equal to j, it will contribute 1. And so what we are going to essentially want to do is we are summing over all potential beta 1, beta 2 assignments. And we are doing a product over all the variables of qx, beta 1x, beta 2j, x. So that's what our formula looks like. So what we, whenever we are going to do simplification, we want to maintain that below any node, that summation holds. Okay, but we will do lots of changes here and there. Rather than Q, we will use something else, and so on. So that's what the aim is. Yes. Q X I J. If you look at this, actually I should have four branches and so on. So at some point at the bottom, what you want is that you have some assignment beta one, beta two. You are trying to see whether beta one satisfies, beta two satisfies. And based on that, so if for any particular variable x, we see in the two assignments whether x is same or not. If it is same, we multiply by 1. If it is different, we multiply by u. So that's what this is denoting. OK, so I, this is I, what I intuitively said earlier. So we will have nodes represent formula pairs, phi 1 and phi 2. So that original phi, both sides have been simplified in some way. That might be different simplification in the two sides, phi 1 and phi 2 we will get because we have set the variables con differently or the linking might be different and so on. So phi 1 and phi 2 are there and some variables have been their fixed values and so on. And our aim is, as I said, to calculate this fu function. Okay? But because we have made some changes, we will have to record what we have updated. So we will have something called p main, which will be intuitively record all the factors coming in when we have fixed some variables, values. And we will have pxij instead of qxij, because pxij has similar notion as qxij. But because some variables which are linked to x, we want to carry that information along. So pxij carries all that information along with it. OK, so that's the intuition there. So at any node in the search tree, we want to calculate the formula based on phi 1 and phi 2 are the two simplifications for the two sides which we are comparing. S1 and S2 are the values of some variables which we have fixed in the both sides. V is the current set of variables on which phi 1 and phi 2 depend. That is some subset of x. And P, capital P is all the polynomials which we are carrying along. The P main and the P X I J's which we are carrying along, that will be what P is. Intuitively, this is what MHD is going to calculate. P main multiplied by summation over all the beta 1, beta 2 for X in V. So V is the current set of variables. P X, beta 1, beta 2 X. That's what it is supposed to give me. At the root, because all the pxijs will be qxijs, and all the variables are there, that's the formula we wanted to actually have. At the root, p main is 1. OK, so that's the root value, and we will go on exploring. So at any node in the search tree, this is what we are going to calculate. 
And when we modify, we want to make sure, based on the children, that formula is maintained. And that's correct, then only we can do the induction. Of course, this uh, beta 1, beta 2 has to be consistent with S1 and S2, whatever we have been assigned, only among those we consider. Okay, so initially we want to calculate both phi 1 and phi 2 are phi. S1, S2 have no assignments given. V is x and P has P main is 1 and P x i j is Q x i j as the initial values. Okay. And so what we will do at any node is either we will branch over some variable and just to shorten the proof many times we might branch over several variables in one go. Okay. And simplify the formulas using some polynomial time. So that's what we will do at any node. And we will ensure that the parent MHD is the sum of the children MHD. So main thing is because otherwise this gets very messy, very difficult to see what's going on. What we will ensure is that phi 1 and phi 2 are similar, what we call similar. What do we mean by similar? That is, this, we, they have the same number of clauses, both sides. Initially, it is always true because both are same. And the clauses in them can be put in one-to-one -one correspondence with each other. In such a way that each two clauses which are in one-to-one -one correspondence are similar. What is a clause being similar means? Well, they essentially look the same, except the literals might be negated. So x, y, 0 is similar to not x, y, 1. Okay, so you might make some local changes, but the variables don't change. So that's what we call similar. So the two phi 1 and phi 2 will always be similar in any particular node. Okay, so well, why do we want this restriction? Well, that's the only way we could analyze it. Otherwise, it is too messy to analyze, and that's why we kept similarity all over the place. And this similarity is very much used in what part case two of our analysis, as we will see later. Okay, this might make it inefficient. So, might our algorithm may give very loose bounds. Because sometimes we might have fixed values, some variables, but I can't remove it. For example, if we have a clause like x or x or 1, we know that x must be 0. Okay, because otherwise 1 in 3 set cannot work. Uh, but I can't get rid of x because it might be used in some other place in the other side and so on. Okay, so let's give the, now the intuition behind the algorithm and the case analysis. So this will be a sketch of the proof. Uh, Case one is all about simplifications, what we are going to do, except in some cases we will see what branching we are doing. Case two is the bulk of the work, but unfortunately I won't have time to go through it in detail, but I will just say how that works. So let's consider some simplifications which we are going to do. So if some clause in phi one or phi two cannot be satisfied at all, for example, it is like zero or x or x. Whatever value you give to x, if you give 0, none of them is 1. If you give it value 1, two of them become 1. So we know that in this case, that sub t is going to give you 0. So we immediately can say, OK, we return 0. We don't need to go down in the tree. If x has been determined in both s1 and s2, OK, but because of our simplification, we haven't recorded it yet. Then we want to just say, OK, record it. We don't need to consider x anymore. So what we are going to do is record it in p main. So multiply in p main summation of x p x i j. Here i j has to be consistent with s1 and s2 if it has been already assigned some values. And if there is a clause with only one variable, x. So it might look like x or x or 0. Or it might like x or not x or x or whatever way. In which case, we can fix the value of x in both sides. Okay, either to 1 or 0, or we can say that, well, it cannot work, whatever way it comes out to be. And we can say what is the value of x. So we can fix that, simplify, get rid of the variable x. So it gives us a simplification. If there is a clause which has exactly two variables in its component, not three, as in the threes had, in general you might have. Then what we can say is either one of the variables value is fixed or they are linked to each other. For example,
let's say we have this. We know that x should be negation of y. Okay, so what we can do is that replace all the y's by not x throughout. Note that this replacement in phi 1 and phi 2 might be different because even though they have the same variables, they might have slightly different negations, etc. Okay, here it might be, for example, x or not y or 0. So in this case, x is equal to not y, here x equal to not not y, and so on. So linking might be different, but in both cases, both sides y can be dropped. So we drop it, that is a simplification. When we drop it, of course, we have to update the pxijs, because now pxij has to carry the information about whatever we did to y. So what we update each pxij is, we multiply pxij by py i prime j prime, that is, if x is i and j in the two parts, what will be the y values of y in the two parts? i prime, j prime may not be the same. If i and j are the same, it might be linked differently. Whatever it is, we put that information in there and update pxij. Two clauses share two of the literals, but the third literal might be different. If they are third, all three are similar, they are similar clauses, we won't worry about it yet. Okay, but if they have two variables which they share, the third is different. Then what we can say is that Z is linked to W. Why? For example, if X or Y and X prime Y prime are both same, X prime is X, Y prime is Y, then we know that Z must be the same as Y, W. Value of Z must be same as W. Similarly, we can consider all four cases. X is equal to not X, Y equal to Y prime or vice versa or both are negations, etc. In all four cases, we can see that Z is linked to W. So we can get rid of one variable and we can update the P main or PXIJs as in the previous cases. This is a little bit complicated now. Suppose X appears in at least four dissimilar clauses. In this case, what we can, we will do is we will branch on the value of X. The aim is that if we have four dissimilar clauses in which X appears, we can get enough what we can say is well, uh, simplification by just branching on X and we can do certain things. So what things we can do? Of course, we branch on being consistent on S1, S2, whatever we have given. So we branch on that value. And because X appears in four clauses, these are not same because otherwise it would have been taken in previous cases. Let's say x is 0, we get these two linked, whatever the value of x. In the four clauses, you can link the other two variables. So you can drop four of them for the future consideration. x is always dropped, so you are essentially dropping five variables by branching. And we will see later that that's good enough for us. So that's what we do if x appears in at least four dissimilar clauses. Okay, suppose that also doesn't happen. Then we are looking for some other kind of things where we can simplify. So suppose we have some set of variables i and j. i is not too big, j is not too big. So that the variables from i, either they appear in clauses only involving j, and other clauses don't involve any i, values from i. Okay, in that case, we can do some simplifications. Three cases we will consider, j is of size one, two or three. So we will consider j is of size one, in which case we consider, we don't drop the x here at this point, we won't branch on x, but we do some simplifications on the pxijs based on what is the value of x. We will just do that simplification, but not drop x at this point. But doing that simplification, we can show that we can get rid of all the variables in i. j, if it has two variables, one of which appears outside with something else, we can again do the simplification. There, the simplification will be by branching on x. And if j is of size 3 and certain other patterns are there, we can do another simplification. So I won't go into that, but we can do the simplifications there. The next case will be, 
Suppose there is a class which has at most at least four neighbors. What do we mean by a neighbor? So x, y, z, and if we have x prime, these two are neighbors because they have a common variable. So suppose some class has at least four neighbors. We can then say that in some sense, if none of the previous simplifications apply, then the four neighbors must be of one of these five forms. Okay. So if it is in any of these forms we can again get rid of lots of variables by doing some simplifications as we said earlier i won't go into those details okay so that gives us lots of simplifications in this case if we have only those five possibilities what we will do is we will branch either on both x and x prime being zero on the two sides sorry let me call it triple prime because i used x prime somewhere else so x triple prime being 0 or we know that at least one of x and x triple prime is 1. We branch on those possibilities. So there will be 9 possibilities there. But based on that, what we can simplify, how many variables we can delete, we do it on that basis. Okay, In the first case, when x and x prime are 0, 0, we can get rid of 4 variables. And when in the other cases, we can get rid of seven variables, okay? But there are nine branches, but we can get rid of seven variables. What we can show is that that's good enough for the aim which we are having. So that was, these were the simplifications as I talked. Some of them are a bit messy simplification. Now case two. If none of those case one cases apply, that means we don't have many neighbors, no variable appears in many of the clauses and so on and so forth. That's nice to us because then we can consider the clauses as our text, let's say. And if uh, there is a neighbor, we pick, make an edge. No clause has more than three neighbors, which is good because now the graph is very sparse. And what we can do is there is a result by some other earlier work in graph theory that these graphs, which are like three regular graphs, they are like three regular graphs. We can do some partition such that we have some clauses here, some here. You have edges. The number of edges crossing is not too many. It is something like one by six of the number of clauses. We can't get rid of all the variables directly in this because some of them still might have whatever because we have three neighbors. We can show that on the other side, you have at most two. Otherwise, we can do some switching. And these two sides are more or less equal. So if we branch on all these variables which are in the common side, both sides, that will be about one sixth of the number of clauses. Number of clauses won't be more than two by three of the number of variables in this case. We can show that. That gives us a good handle. We don't have to branch too much. We do two independent stuff now. The good thing in the independent stuff is that we can just carry over some of the techniques. We don't need to branch too many. In particular, what you can show is that this part, if you only consider the case two part, gives that many leaves. Four to the four n by 21 plus smaller factors. Okay? That's not too bad compared to four to the n. Okay? So that was one thing. So we do all those simplifications, etc. So we count number of leaves now. And in case one, there were few cases where we branched. And in case two, as we said, we have done that branching. And uh, what we can show is that in case one case, we consider what alpha, because we are looking for something like how many leaves you have of alpha to the end, what alpha is good enough for whatever cases. So you, we consider alphas which are good enough for all the cases. Case one five, we did branching. This alpha is good enough. Case one six, we did branching. This alpha is good enough. Case one seven, this branching is good enough. This is good enough. You see what is the worst case. This one comes out to be the worst case. And that gives us the complexity of the algorithm that the number of leaves in our tree, search tree is at most 1.3298 to the end. And whether we can improve it by looking at more 
critical cases or not, I don't know at this point, but we can possibly do it. So that's the main result which we have. Okay, so I conclude my talk. We gave us faster algorithm than before. Not only we give maximum Hamming distance because we give that polynomial, we can consider all possible distances, what, what, how many of pairs are there like that. Okay, so it is general, more general than the Hamming distance calculation. The algorithm style is similar to some of the earlier algorithm style, just that we did a different analysis. Main thing which we did was that keep the clauses similar in all the branches. That made us able to do some simplifications, more easily count what's going on. Okay, that's all from my side. No, the cases which we did, what we did is that if you look at each of these cases, last one is was easy because uh, that was just uh, branching and we just calculated it by using any so GP. Uh, uh, no, uh, one that doesn't have any closed form. That's just saying that hey, how many branches you have? So we have formulas like. Uh, TR is equal to, for, let's say, I can't remember what the formula came out to be, but something like this came out and then we just see which R works, what alpha works, that's all, okay?